Hello, this is Evan Rogerson, 9 Motor Gang here, and we are back today with another game manual breakdown. This was a major game manual update, version 3.0, so there were plenty of major changes made that are going to dramatically affect the game. I'm going to go through them in order that they're listed here, which is also the order that they're in the manual. Not necessarily in order of most importance, so make sure you stick around to the end so you don't miss any of those. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm, and share this with your clueless sister teams, because everybody has a sister team that doesn't have any clue what's going on with the rules so share it with them and this can also be a passive aggressive way to get at your sister teams because we love that additionally if you haven't already seen my video that i pushed out yesterday where i go through and make some predictions to the game manual go ahead and watch that now that'll be up in the top right corner there because this video will obviously be spoiling it because i'm going through and breaking down the predictions and at the end of this video i'll go back kind of through and reflect on those predictions that i made the next scheduled update, although they do come up with unscheduled updates occasionally, isn't until April 2nd, after the Event Region Championships have wrapped up and we're getting ready for Worlds. So, definitely make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that update. Additionally, as per usual, I will have the older version of the game manual on the left-hand side and the newer version of the game manual on the right-hand side, so you can easily compare and contrast and see all the differences in the update that they've changed. Our first change is to SC5, which involves whether or not a goal is considered placed in the corner in order to be doubled or negated. So it's a very slight change. Previously, the mobile goal had to be breaking the plane of the corner, at least somewhat, but now the mobile goal base has to be breaking the plane. So I kind of set up a little thing real quick. So pretend those zip ties are tape. We take down our field so often that we don't leave the tape up. So this mobile goal, like this top part of the barb, is clearly breaking the plane of what would be the corner. But the base is not, you can see right there. So under the previous version of this rules, this would have been considered in the corner, but now it is not considered to be in the corner. Overall, I don't think this has too much strategic implications, because I don't think anyone is like strategically trying to do this in order to get their goal in the corner, because if you rotate it too much, then it's not going to be considered scored because some portion of the flexible top is higher than the top edge of the field perimeter. So it's a very narrow band. I'm not quite sure why the GDC updated it. It seems like a very edge case thing. But this, just keep it in mind when you're scoring. Um, but overall strategy, I don't think you really need to affect your strategy around that unless you're doing something weird like this. All right, next up, this is a rather large change. So previously, if your robot was contacting a mobile goal, you did not count as elevated. Now you can be touching mobile goals and you're still elevated. They just completely deleted that part of the rule. So I think this has some strategic implications, but I don't think it's actually that big as it first seems. So the main thing here is now you can hang with your goal instead of having to leave it on the ground in order to be negative cornered. Now, I don't think this is actually going to affect things very much because people haven't been building their robots to hang with goals. And it's a little bit late. Maybe teams will go around and change that. But our tier three buddy hang that we've been working on can hang with a goal. And what we were doing previously is you just drop the goal from tier three at like one second left. So there's not enough time for the team to go to the corner. And worst case scenario, you're going to lose like one ring falling off. So I guess this is a positive because you don't have to risk that extra ring falling off or accidentally dropping the goal or something weird. I would say the main so starting off, you could potentially balance your robot around hanging with a goal, um, which I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing to do because it could be a little bit risky if you don't have the goal there. But I definitely think you'll see a lot more tier one hangs maybe now just because of this. But overall, I don't think this affects things too much. Just strategically, I would say maybe consider balancing your robot's hang around holding a goal. And if you are going for those high hangs, um, I would assume hang with your goal if you weren't already planning to do that. Thing you're probably going to see this effect is tier one hangs and then of course you don't have to drop your goal now so that'll probably save you a point and you know it's probably a good thing you don't want to drop the goals with giant steel base plates from a few feet in the air onto a potential robot underneath so now this is another fairly large change to hang um, the high stake now gets an extra three point bonus the extra two points for each hanging robot is still there but they added this line where a robot scored on a high stake will also earn a bonus three points in addition to the standard three points. And I assume that these are ring points, so they could be affected by the negative corners. But overall, I don't think this matters much because A, people haven't been going for the high stake anyways. And B, as I stated in my predictions video that dropped yesterday, I really don't think the point value of the high stake matters because it's too easy to prevent a team from getting up on the high stake. 
We have a small update to rule SG3. They got rid of this red box that said that the intent was to stop teams from skipping levels. Now really this box didn't mean anything before because there was already Q&A out that kind of overruled this box by saying that you could go straight to the top. This is what Kudos did for their tier 3 buddy hang that they had at Riverbots. So basically they even updated this Q&A to say that some parts of it are now affected by the mobile goal rule where I said earlier because originally you could prop your robot up on rings. And once your robot's propped up above the rings, you're no longer breaking that bottom plane. And now you could extend all the way up and you could reach the top right there. So now you could obviously prop yourself up on a goal if you wanted to get up there, which I imagine would be a little bit easier because propping up on a goal seems easier than propping up on a ring. And additionally, you don't have to worry about touching that goal. So this could be another thing where being able to touch your goal and hang if you want to prop up to go straight to tier three. But the main thing is, is you previously could go from almost touching the ground straight up to the top of the ladder. So this red box was already kind of overruled, so now they just completely got rid of it. So it makes the game a little bit clearer. Because as you can see right here, if they're no longer talking the 0-1 plane, are they now allowed to break the 2-3 plane? So as long as they're not touching there, they can go all the way up there, meaning your robot could be in levels 1, 2, and 3 at the same time. Now, this is just a silly GDC thing. Um, for some reason, this line took up two lines in the previous game manual, and now it only takes up one. No actual rule change here, just weird formatting things. Now, this is actually an update to a rule that came out a long time ago. I think back in like the early September update. Previously, way back when, you, if your robot was touching a ring of the same alliance color, that ring didn't count for points. But now you can be touching your own colored rings and still have them count for points. So this section is no longer relevant. The whole meets the criteria of our scored ring even if contacted by a robot. Contact from a robot is relevant, so they just simplified it to say robot scored on a stick not included in the robot's possession count. So just simplifies the rule, doesn't actually change anything. This is just sort of clearing up, I guess, an old piece of verbiage that's no longer relevant. So another change made to SG6, this is actually a really, really good change. It's not going to come up very often, but it's a very good change to have, something that I think is very important to have. So so previously, you had to be the alliance who won the match in order to be convicted of a egregious SG6 violation. Meaning like pushing multiple, if, like if you go and you push two goals at the same time, that's an egregious SG6 violation. You could only be DQ'd for that if you won the match. So it could actually be strategically viable to cheat uh, in previous versions of the game. Whereas if you're losing and you know you're going to lose anyways, break the rules to get your clo score as close as possible so that hopefully something the other team did would be considered match affecting. And this is actually, whether intentional or not, how a team won Worlds last year. So this is actually a really big thing. It can decide the outcome of who wins Worlds. But now any team that commits the violation is going to be convicted of a DQ and it will result in... Potentially a double DQ if both teams would be disqualified anyways, which is better than the team who was going to lose anyway winning the match. So this means that it's not strategically viable to cheat anymore. So that's a pretty big win, in my opinion. Now, of course, I kind of glanced over the whole fact about um, strategically cheating to win being like a G1 violation. But also there were times where teams would accidentally do this and then it ended up working out for them. But that's like a whole different mess or rabbit hole. The big thing is, is now there's less scenarios where breaking the rules is ever advantageous to you. Now, next up, this is kind of a very, very weird niche thing that I've only seen happen with one team, is scoring the other team's rings on your own alliance stake. So Kudos, one of the teams that I was talking about earlier, during the autonomous period, they would actually score, because they had a claw that could pick up two rings at once, they would pick up a blue ring and pick up a red ring and put them on their alliance stake, assuming they were blue. So either way, they would end up with the other team's ring on their alliance stake. But everybody thought that this didn't matter. This is the way all the referees scored it. You can see me in a match against them. We saw them do this. They did this. Everybody thought that this would actually count as their ring not being scored. Because it seems to be pretty clear that if a ring is in the scored position, that ring will not be considered scored. That ring will not be considered count for points. However, that's at the end of the match. So actually, what should have been happened, and no hate to kudos because this didn't actually affect any of the match outcomes anyway. They either completely destroyed an autonomous because they T3 buddy hanged, or they lost autonomous because they didn't T3 buddy hang. So I don't think this actually affects anything. But that ring should have actually counted for points and counted as a red alliance top ring. So just a small little niche weird thing. 
And I don't think anybody had realized this previously, so you probably weren't building your strategy around it. And special shout out to whichever GDC member or person realized this, because that's kind of an obscure rule. There was something similar back with this with tipping point, with this is the same verbiage they used to signal that the platforms could only be counted as balanced at the end game and not during autonomous. So very small thing, but overall it just kind of clears up something. So this ring does not count for points during autonomous, whereas previously it would have. Next up, this is probably the biggest change in the manual that's going to affect anything. Now, everybody knows SG-11, positive corners are protected during the end game, And of course, not everyone, because we all have that one team that doesn't know about the rule and they go and violate it in every single match. Now, previously, this was last 15 seconds, the goals were protected. Now this is last 30 seconds. This is going to have dramatic impacts on gameplay, probably the most gameplay affecting changes of any of the ones made here, because this is going to affect every single match. Now overall, I think this is a pretty positive change. Uh, some people will disagree, but uh, maybe that's just because I'm a buddy hang glazer. So I think there's a couple good things from this. There's going to be less time that teams are sitting in the corner. And if you're spending less time sitting in the corner, I think we can all agree that that's a win. Now, this is probably going to make wall stakes more play, because now once that team comes out of the corner, they can start engaging in wall stakes. Additionally, I think this will make hangs more prevalent, because now instead of having roughly 15 seconds to go and hang all the way to the top, you now have 30 seconds, or maybe you could do some wall stakes and then go hang. So I think you'll see in a lot this indirectly makes hang a lot more important, even with hang, without hang being worth more points. Because I think now you're going to have teams scoring wall stakes a little bit faster. So you're going to see the wall stakes filling up. And de-scoring wall stakes, there are definitely some teams who can do it. But it's definitely scoring harder than scoring on the wall stakes in the first place. So I definitely think you'll end up with more matches in which the wall stakes are full. Which definitely incentivizes hanging a little bit better. I do think this will indirectly make hanging easier just because you have more time. And it'll be more incentivized because the wall stakes are going to fill up faster. So overall, I think this is a very positive change, but like I said, this will be a major thing that is going to dramatically affect gameplay in every single match. So make sure you keep this in mind. Next up, just a small change, uh, the firmware. You're now required to have a newer version of firmware than you previously were have. Um, this ver version of firmware came out on September 9th, so you're probably already running it. I checked and we already were, but just double check with your coders that you're running the most up-to-date version of the firmware. Now, this isn't something that your team needs to take into consideration, but it is something you might see pop up at some tournaments. Uh, this is the number of teams that you're supposed to have in eliminations based on the number of teams at your competition. However, now they've updated it to say that the RECF regional support manager can waive this in extreme circumstances, slightly modify it. I don't know exactly what these extreme circumstances are, but I can imagine a couple scenarios. Like, so let's say you have 18 teams at a tournament, and you're going to have two teams not make eliminations. It kind of sucks for those two teams to not make elims, so I could see them potentially stretching it here so that everybody gets to make elims. Or potentially the other way I could see this being implemented is if you're at a really big tournament, like there are tournaments that run 120 teams in one division. That means only about a quarter of the teams are actually going to make elims, which... Could mean that a lot of teams that usually wouldn't make elims, they usually would make elims, aren't going to make elims now. So maybe they'd expand it to have a round of 32. I don't know, but I imagine you'll see this pop up. Also, uh, GDC, you added two colons there when you're only supposed to have one. And it looks like you're about to call something from a C++ library. Alright, finally, this is just kind of a small verbiage change to vex you buddy hang. It doesn't really affect gameplay, it's just making it more clear that the buddy robot that's not contacting through the ladder does get their hang protections. This was already kind of clarified, I don't think this will really affect gameplay at all, I think it just kind of clarifies the wording. Now, going back through and looking at my uh, predictions from last time, I think overall they are pretty accurate. I didn't get the SG-11 rewording that I thought we were going to get, I think this is one of the main things that people were upset with this game manual, is it didn't do this. It didn't make it more clear when it's supposed to be a DQ, when it's not supposed to be a DQ. So I think that's one of the main reasons people are upset. I think the other one is SG6, which they did kind of mention, but it only made it easier for you to get DQ'd for pushing multiple goals around. It didn't really provide any clarification there. I think that's the two main reasons people are upset. Also, they didn't directly change the points that Hang gives, but like I said earlier, I think the changes to SG-11, which they did implement, they did increase the positive corner protection time from 15 seconds to 30 seconds. I do think, just because you'll see more wall stakes scored, I do think that will encourage more teams to do Hang. Um, my other next prediction in terms of likelihood to be implemented was the high stake point increase, which, right on the nail with that one. 
And then none of the other changes were implemented here. Also, I would like to make a very sincere apology. Um, me when I spread misinformation on the internet. If you look down here, I said, make llamas vex legal. Um, implying that llamas were not already vex legal. Now, I would like to apologize for this, as I clearly had a severe lapse of understanding as to whether or not the legality of Vex Llamas in the V5RC competition. As has since been pointed out to me by a GDC member, Llamas actually are already VRC legal, as long as they are students and they are main in the drive station during the match. So, you gotta get the Llamas enrolled in their education and train them to stay in the match. And then, of course, you can't have your VRC legal llamas. So, uh, a sincere apology to all of the llamas studying and education out there that I incidentally excluded from competing in the Vex V5 Robotics competition. So, I think that pretty much wraps everything up from the game manual. As always, if you have any questions, comment them down below, and I will give my best interpretation of the rule. As always, I'm not on the GDC. This is my interpretation. I've been doing this for seven years, but I do still make mistakes. So always be sure to reread this and double check all my information yourself. I'll have the link to the manual in the description. And make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm and consider joining the YouTube membership. I'll see you in the next one.